In this video, I would like to review how to use sublists. So I'm currently in the list section under my edit lists. And to begin, you'll need to think of sublists as backwards. So you need to create the secondary lists or the layers before you create the top list. So you would just come in and create a list like you normally would. I'm going to open my audit inspection with sublists. And once you've created each of your layered lists, when you come in and add in a new item, you're going to select this sublist once you get to that top list. So again, create all of your layers, then you're going to create your parent list or top list. When you add in the sublist item, you're going to go ahead and enter in the prompt text. This is going to be the information that they're going to see. So in my example here, I have the exterior, the dining room. This is what they will see when they go to click on the item to go into that layer. So you'll name this or put the information, whatever you need here. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down and you'll see your sublist options here. When you go to the drop down, it's going to give you a list of all of your list templates. Now, one thing I like to do and that I always recommend is naming conventions can be very useful. We also have the folders for organizing your list, but if you enter in something like Z, then here, this is how I like to name my sublists. I'll do a Z so they fall all the way to the bottom of all of my lists. I use SL so I know it's a sublist, and then I put in the name of the list here, this is our audit, and then which section or what the name of that sublist is. So it's very easy for me to know which list I'm looking for. And you can create your own naming conventions, whatever works for you. This is just how I do mine. And then once you select that, it'll now be tied in to that item. So when you go to the device and you go to that audit, when you select that sublist, it'll open up and there's those items. Now, if you need to make a change to the sublist, you also have an option while you're here, this little button here is actually going to open that up into a new tab. And now I'm going to have all of my items for this sublist template and I can update, adjust, whatever I may need to do for this list. And then all I have to do is return back to my other tab and I'm back to my parent list or my top list. Another thing that I recommend doing is in the settings, when you scroll down to your role-based access, I always recommend disabling the creating settings for at least those that are assigned the list. Those that are managing the list, you may need it for testing, so you may want to pull up just one section or one piece of that entire list, just pull up that sublist. So you may want to still have access to manually create it, but once the list is ready, you typically won't need to manually pull up that sublist any further. So I just turn off those two create settings. What that does is when you're in the app, when you go to the plus button here, it hides those lists so that they cannot be created and they don't take up all the space within your list section here. As always, make sure once you've made any changes to your list that you make sure you save those changes. And that's the same for a sublist or a parent list or just a normal list that doesn't use the sublist feature. Now, within any list, you can have as many sublists as you'd like. You can go multiple layers deep, so you can have a sublist within a sublist within a sublist if you'd like. And then if that sublist is not required to be completed, you can mark items within a list as non-applicable, but you can also mark an entire sublist as non-applicable. So if they don't need to complete that section, maybe they don't have a drive through or a dining room or whatever the case may be, you can allow the entire section or sublist to be marked as not applicable. So when we go to the app, we can go to that sublist. When you go to the three dots here, just like you would on any item, it would have the NA option available. And that's how you use sublist items within your list and some of the best practices.